Megan sells fabricated stories for exorbitant prices in the new podcast, Who Wants to Buy Them? Hello, friends. Welcome to the breaking news of the notorious royal trader Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. So Meghan Markle has finally released the beginning of the Archetypes podcasts, and the first episode involves an interview with Serena Williams. And I think it is about as irrelevant and embarrassing as you would expect. She begins the episode with the big 1993 Nick News Ivory Clear Dishwashing Liquid advert. Conveniently, Megan fails to mention that her father was actually a friend of Linda Ellerby, and he was the one who got her that spot on Nick News in the first place. Now, for all we know, she did write some letters, but there's absolutely no real proof that her letters were ever answered. Her father claims they were not, and as a result, he tried to get them to acknowledge her, but still they ignored her. And apparently she was also one of the thousands of people who protested that advertisement. For sure, though, the company never responded to Megan personally. And Vanity Fair definitely did not use that ivory dishwashing liquid story because they were unable to verify Megan's version of the events. So just like every single thing that Megan gets involved in, the side eye is necessary from the very beginning. I mean, right from the start, such stupid mistakes. That 11-year-old girl story may have worked wonders for Megan in the past, but now we just roll our eyes every single time she uses it. Because now everybody knows the reality of that story, and we know that she always forgets to mention some pretty important facts when she uses the story. So then she moves on, discussing her Catholic school, Immaculate Heart, which she now says is a feminist school. Okay, well, she goes on and on about how she went to school there for six years. She actually did use the dishwashing liquid commercial to get into the school, apparently. And she claims that she learned at school that ambition was the point of things. She didn't understand then that ambition was a bad thing until, of course, she hooked up with Harry. She and Serena have a little conversation, assuring listeners that Serena is a very close friend of hers. I'm guessing she was taking a dig at Tom Bowers with that one, but of course, Serena denying that they were such close friends five years ago is not actually disproven by whatever their relationship now happens to be, and Serena also never thought to deny making that comment to the reporter at Vanity Fair. In no way, shape, or form does that podcast address the point that when your ambition causes you to lie and you end up lying about some very serious things like racism, mental health, and misinformation, it's pretty difficult to deny that ambition is a negative thing. And what about when your ambition leads you to ditch your lifelong friends as well as create and really nurture feuds, not just in your own family, but also in your husband's family? I don't see how that's a thing that you should be proud of. Now, Serena Williams is not like Megan. Thanks to her ambition and her own hard work, she got to where she wanted to be. And she never used racism as an excuse for anything. No, she just got on with things, and she shut everybody up thanks to her sheer talent and her drive. And she had the talent to back up whatever came out of her mouth. But see, Meghan Markle has no talent. Instead, she just spent years changing socioeconomic narratives. She lies about her history. She lies about her ancestry. She lies about racism. And she also fails to acknowledge the men who made what success she ever enjoyed possible. Now, once upon a time, she did give her father some credit. But now, he's just an overweight man with a cluttered house, and he doesn't have a lot of social skills. So he simply did not fit into his daughter's new life. So Megan started to distance herself from him well before she ever met Harry. But then, at the first opportunity for a reason to completely ditch him, she took it. So the bottom line is this. And when it comes to ambition, I mean, nothing has ever held me back, and the same goes for most women I know. If I wanted something, I made sure to get it. And if there was an obstacle I needed to overcome, then I did it, and I did it with integrity. I never relied on a man to help me get what I wanted in life. My father had passed away when I was young, so I was responsible for my own education. And we're not together now, but my first husband I married for love. I didn't care how he could help me with achieving my own goals. And my second husband, well, he was a complete equal to me, and that's what I loved so much about our relationship. See, neither of us was in a position to lavish material goods on the other. We made a beautiful life for 15 years together. We shared everything, and then finally we decided to get married. You know, better late than never. 
I had to work very hard in school to become a CPA, and I made my own money. And you know what? My ambition never made me step all over the people I cared about or claimed to love. Have I ever lied? Well, who hasn't? Of course I have, but still, I always try to own up to my lies if I make that mistake. The times that I've been caught in a little white lie, sure, I was embarrassed. I didn't say you looked fat in the dress, but honey, you did. Anyway, I don't think there's anyone out there who would claim that their lives were negatively affected by some lie that I told. But we cannot say the same for Meghan Markle. Now, we all have ambition, but ambition doesn't quite have all of us. And once again, Meghan really had the chance to do something positive, and she blew it. Instead of using her podcast to spread goodwill, she just used it to sell us some old stories that we can't verify. And she takes absolutely no responsibility for the negative public perception of her. She convinces herself that it's her ambition that people have such a problem with that we just want to hold her back. Uh, No, darling. It's what your ambition brings out in you that we so despise. We don't appreciate that we see your ambition makes you into a lying, manipulative hypocrite. And it's not because you're just wanting more. It's what you're going to do to get more. So, of course, by and large, the people's reaction to Megan's podcast has been negative. One spectator has said, I'm so sick of this ridiculous narrative about women being held back, period. My mother's generation fought that fight, and I have dealt with sexism, but it never held me back. It holds people back that allow it to do so. I do not appreciate the whole victim narrative on my sex. This commenter continues, saying the entire premise of her podcast is an insult. We certainly do not need Meghan Markle as a woman advocate. She was empowered her entire life by men. And as far as listening to her drivel, well, I cannot accurately judge it if I don't listen. It was a grind to get through, and there was nothing new or insightful. Archie's bedroom fire was tossed in for good measure and to have a dig at royal tours. But I would have to hear that story from someone a little less likely to lie. Meghan always has to interrupt talking about herself and her own experiences. Again, though, she's just using misinformation and she is lying to attempt to justify what she thinks her ambition is not acceptable. She's just a disgusting person. She distorts the truth. George Clooney's wife was a lawyer before she got married to him, and the same goes for Michelle Obama. So what on earth did Meghan ever do in her own right before she got with Harry? Suggesting that females who marry up are unable to be ambitious for themselves is absolute garbage. So a series of accusations of falsehood have come up within hours of this new podcast episode coming out. One audience member expressed displeasure at the story of Archie's little accident that supposedly happened. So she says, why are we hearing about Archie's brush with death only now, three years later? If it actually happened, why wouldn't it have been plastered all over the papers by her or Harry at the time? Yeah, that does seem like something she would have loved to have talked about, particularly since it involved their alleged son. So she had Tom Bradbury interviewing her in Africa, saying that no one was asking if she was okay. If that had really happened, I'm sure that she would have mentioned it in that interview. I simply cannot believe a word of that story. And the temperature at the time in South Africa would not have been cool enough to require heaters. Also, most homes in South Africa don't have central heating. Winter is really short and it's very mild in most places, so usually it's just not necessary. If you just do a little bit of research, you can find that out. So visiting Cape Town in September and October, the rain does let up a little bit, falling only 5 to 8 days every month. And temperatures usually range between about 13 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees Celsius. Most days are at a nice cool 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. So for all of you in America who may not understand that, I don't blame you, that would be 57 to 61 degrees Fahrenheit. So central heating is usually under the floor, and it's very luxurious. It's only found in really rich homes in South Africa. Now, I'm going to assume, of course, they're going to be staying in one of those, because remember, what Megan wants, Megan gets. So I don't believe there would be a radiator in the house. Megan was absolutely lying once again. Why does she always expect people to believe her ridiculous stories to take them as gospel when they're so easily proven to be false? What do you think of Megan's new podcast episode? Have you heard it yet? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. And please don't forget to leave us a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back to see you in the next videos, and we hope you have a wonderful weekend.